All right. Chad, we're playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders. This game was funded by KFC. We gotta let it play. Every time. And there's a Corgi in the game! <laughs> All right, we are back. We are back. Everybody say hi, YouTube. Hello. Uh, we are playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders today in full Colonel Sanders cosplay. Uh, we did the same thing last year and the year before and the year before. And now we're back to celebrate 10 years on the channel. And we're going back in. We are playing this game start to finish to try and win the Colonel's heart. I mean, this is more of like a retrospective. Like, it's me looking back at my younger years, you know? My, 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 my wee, my wee younger years. Back before I had my famous KFC chicken empire that you see on every street corner from sea to shine and see <laughs> so we are playing this today settings full screen all right everything's good everything's good and then some True. True. We're going to have to figure out where to put my camera because I don't know where it's going to fit best. But we are starting nonetheless. Can we get some pogs in the chat? Here we go. I will do be doing my best to voice act every character. Um, Some will be better than others. But here we go. Here we go. Enter your name. And so was born a Corgi VTuber by the name of Corgi Sanders. This game was the first instance ever of me using the name Corgi. Canonically, canonically, the Sona's name is Corgi C. Sanders because of this. <laughs> oh my God. Here we go. Here we go. Let me take a sip and we'll get started. No, this game didn't make me a furry. Let me move this up here. Should be good, right? I mean, we're going to kind of be blocking some people, but like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. That looks good, right? That looks good. Oh, fuck! I already... Hold on. I already skipped something accidentally. Okay, here we go. Here we go. For real this time! You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You can stay in the moment forever. We've all been there. 
We've all been there. Or you could wake up now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in! Smack that clock up and at him! Or chat, do we throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever? Stay in bed, always too. All right, we're staying in bed. Some veg in the chat. Veg in the chat. You slept through the school year and gave up on your once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. Thank you for watching. All right. For real this time. We 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 got to go. We have a goal, chat. We have a goal. Smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling. Thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting the better of you. You'll need to take this seriously or you allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. Yeah, we gotta take, we got, this is serious. This is serious Court. business, Why court is business. Sanders not giving you any chicken nuggets? Well, ah, uh, that Sanders dude, yeah? Doesn't get the taste of real flavor, like court my business. dad's chicken nuggies. Way better, trust this me. This is serious. You'll need to take it seriously, chat. I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist, teeth, Brush, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Oh! Just what you needed to get your blood flowing. It's just a plain biscuit. It's the, it's going to be the driest thing you've ever eaten in your life. It's, it's just, it's just the driest thing you've ever eaten in your life. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Corgi Sanders. Are you excited for your first day of the rest of our lives? Uh, actually, I'm... Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just, this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to very high standards. How's it going, Junkyard? Listen, ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. Bork, bork. Woof! <laughs> but with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day-only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up! Fucking mood. <laughs> Three days! I bet it costs like $30,000, too. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. 
This summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? We got a pep talker. We got a pep talker. Listen, remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read and lost $10? Hmm. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Listen, I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. <laughs> oh my god. I, uh... I can't believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hand and onto the ground. Hey! It's Mommy! I mean, Ashley! Your arch rival! She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Simmer, chat. Simmer! Simmer! Oh, hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Corgi Sanders shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. Ugh. Kylo Arctic Fox cheered 50 bits, mommy. I no! mean, mommy, I mean, mommy, no! I mean, mommy, I mean. Chat, stop being down bad. That's why I'm blocking. That's why I'm blocking. You can't stand Ashley. Even her name's annoying. You know for a fact that her name's just Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everybody else. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they are rocking glutes. <laughs> chat, can we get some JoJo's? Can we get some Peepo JoJo's in the chat? Ahem, Van Van. <laughs> it never gets old, man. It never gets old. You rang, rang. Asuro! Welcome on in! Hello! Mods, can we get a shout out? You guys are just in time. We're playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders, in Colonel Sanders cosplay. Normally, I look like a dog, but not right now. Oh, my God. You rang, rang. You've never been sure of what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. Thank you, Asuro. Hope your stream was well. I can't believe the Academy, the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning 
would ever allow people like you to attend as students. Oh, I know, right? You just think they'd hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Kylo no! Arctic Fox Kylo, no! bits, Daddy. I mean, Daddy. I mean, <laughs> Daddy. I mean, Daddy. I mean, I'm not sorry. Let's go, Miriam. Uh. Shh. See you, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against it. Uh, against the window, directly next to it. Ah! Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you! I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Chef, also his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Dad, you're in for a treat. Hi, Pop. I'm Corgi Sanders. So... Are you going to make me hold this all day? Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? Miriam, no! 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 I think it's just you. It's definitely just her. You both shrug your shoulders before following him to the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure of where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable! It's him! Can we get some sprinkles in the chat? Can we get some sprinkles in the chat? Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of the US UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. <laughs> oh my god. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then... He walks in! It's him! Cat, calm down. Cat, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You're immediately swept up in an aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. <gasps> it's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. 
Please. <laughs> Call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. Oh! <laughs> oh, that, that's a good idea, Frostbite. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open a window back, open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. What's with all the really weird insult? Besides, when Corgi Sanders sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> Take a moment to clean yourself Kylo up. Kylo Arctic Fox cheered 50 bits. Daddy? We all need a moment I mean, to clean daddy? ourselves up. I mean, Daddy. Yeah. I mean, Daddy. I mean, yep. Daddy. Uh -huh. Last time I promised yep. C O R G W. If you're thirsty, chat, get some water. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Hmm. Professor Dog steps in to, in to settle the class down and get some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sparks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the prof professor's rousing speech. Oh, uh, hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I, uh, I hope everyone had a good summer. I, I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? This fucking guy. <laughs> Uh, don't don't you recognize me? This is my third year at the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Damn, he getting angry. He getting angry. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> Where are my Clank stands? Where are my clank stands? This is literally chat GPT right here. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. <sighs> Can we get some sniffers? Sniffers in the chat. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. 
Damn. Damn. You've never had a talking dog as a t-shirt before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? A beef treat, a rubber ball, or a chicken snack? Oh, God. We gotta go with Chimkin. We gotta go with Chimkin. Can we get some nuggets in the chat? Pork nuggets. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor, furry professor, immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Oh. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. True. True and real. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Corgi Sanders, there's still a seat here. Uh, it seems that no one's claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Two good options, but which will you choose? Chat, we got we got to sit with Colonel. We got to sit with the Colonel. We're sitting with the Colonel. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Dude's just like me in school for real, for real, except I was just like laying back like. <laughs> Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all as you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Okay. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. Literally first time chat message. Colonel literally just dropped a first time chat message. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god as soon as you've settled into your seat the professor makes an announcement think fast it's time for a pop quiz yay a quiz about me this is incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz well tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, then how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. Look at you, Pop. <laughs> That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Feather. It, 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 I'm pretty sure it's not night vision goggles. And I'm pretty sure it's not a slam dunk. That's right. 
What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork. A meat tenderizer for a spork. 100%. 100%. It's the, it's the spork. Name, be, name something better. Sporks are really bad. Sporks are really bad. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a smiley face. Or a silly face. Silly pancakes. Dad, I'm going to go with one. That's right! Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. He's a talking dog that teaches culinary school. He's the best boy! Or yes. Easily the best boy. Easily. That's right! Perfect score! Five out of five! Let's go! We're so good at this. Wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. He's impressed, chat. We're in! Listen, I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Thank you, first time Chatter Sanders. <laughs> Hot diggity, Corgi Sanders. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Cork, would a you delicious go to fragrance school wafts by through Colonel the room Sanders? and tickles well, the end of your nose. Oh, absolutely. Can you imagine the chaos? Me, a shark corgi in a culinary school? I'd turn every cooking lesson into a feast. That's a bad idea. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Oh, uh, ev everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Uh, howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Yeah, fuck this guy. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Stirring! But I... Oh, yeah, we should probably pause the redeems. Mods, if you want to pause the uh, the meep throwable and dropping redeems, that'd be awesome. Stay with the clothes. The corgi clothes, not cork. Cork is fine. Please, thank you. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shh. In honor of the new semester... I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. The smelly smell that smells. Smelly. Indeed, that smell. To hold your breath waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very, ta uh, he's very talented. But were the rumors true? 
is this. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket over his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. God, I'm getting fucking hungry. I just had a burger! Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket? With chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. Chat, write this down! Write this down, Korg Wright! But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like his. She wants him all to himself. Bitch, get away from him. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I got off the chain there. I got off the chain. Mm. Oh, please. Look at that face. <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. Well, Van Van the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, uh, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he realizes, or as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart or swim toward the light. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Focus. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? 
Maybe. Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano. Basil. Maybe. But there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still. Until you find it. We're pretty deep. Could it be? Chemical X. <laughs> Hi, Papa Mod. Hello. Pop, don't ask questions. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the, uh, the, the congrats. What would you call that? Either way. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Papa? It's good to see you. He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. Yo, Tipsy, what's up? Thank you so much. Thank you for the congrats. It's been a long fucking time. It makes me feel old. We've been streaming for 13 years. This channel in particular is 10 years old now, though. We've been around longer, but we got to celebrate the full decade. Hope you're doing well, Tipsy. It's good to see you. Team Zootopia, baby! Hell yeah. This close. This close to beating T-Pain. That close. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it. Oh. And realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. Ah, uh, Robax, thanks for the follow. Well, let me, I gotta move my window here. There we go. Junkyard, thank you for the follow. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with the Colonel. You approach Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I... I wonder if I could talk to you for a second? Uh, anything for a fellow chef? What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold are you to come out and ask? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. He's humble, too. He's humble, too. It's just you and me here talking. I, I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? Semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. We gotta back off. We're pissing them off a bit. We gotta back off. He's clearly not going to give it up easy, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Oh, God. Chatty's right here. He's just breathing into the mic. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Damn. Wow! You never guessed that! 
In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you search. And definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you know two ingredients, or you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. Well, you're wrapped up in a huge revelation. You notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school building. I think about how my story will continue after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea. Add additional ingredient to spice things up. Or be, to, be modest, but thoughtful. We're going to be modest, but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, peppery it was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Corgi Sanders. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson's starting soon. You step into a massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could ever need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans that you're going to earn with your signature, signature adorable tiny food creation. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Yo, Crimson! Welcome on in! Hello! Welcome on in! Can we get a shout out, moderators, for Crimson Fire? Hello! And welcome on in, Raiders. Normally, I am a uh, VTubing doggo, but right now I am cosplaying Colonel Sanders. While we play I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a dating simulator that was funded by KFC. Welcome on in to our 10-year anniversary 24-hour live stream. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, <laughs> if that isn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Oh, sure, Corgi Sanders. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam's left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep, bop. Hmm. Oh, my. Two potential partners. I'm so, I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick four. Friend duties can be a little bit awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Chad, who are we setting Miriam up with? We got to give it to Clank. It's got to be Clank. We can't, we can't in earnest let her, or push her to be with Pop or Pop. Blank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Plank today. That's okay. I already ate. 
It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Plank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Dude, he turned into an elite. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Plank might not have a face, but there's something charming Clark and earnest family about him. Family 321 Clark! resubbed for seven Yo! months and says, How's it going, little cutie boop? I am not little. Thank you for the seven month resub. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you. Can we get some loves in the chat for the resub? I appreciate it. <laughs> Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Plank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be just fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, today's lesson. We're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. It's got to be the mashed potatoes and gravy. If you're picking anything else, are you even playing the game? Do you even know what you're playing? I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. He's perfect. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Damn right! We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? <laughs> Guitar time in the chat. Let's go. Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Corgi Sanders' dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Van Van. Are we working as a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no, it looked like Corgi Sanders was struggling. So we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> Doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Stop blowing up 
flushing. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for the Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sander, hunk of hunks in your time of need, or turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Colonel's right here. Who's Miriam? <laughs> Savage. I'm here to learn and to express myself via cuisine, not bicker with prima donna. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to the Colonel, to, to Colonel Sanders to confirm you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts to handshakes. I took on Corgi Sanders as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Colonel Sanders shot a guy. <laughs> Didn't he shoot a business partner? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Colonel Sanders shot his business partner. <laughs> Or something along those lines. You like beat him up or something. To Google. Based on your team's behavior. Oh, uh, based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Corgi Sanders natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel, San Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. A rival gas station owner. Damn. Shit's, dude, shit's wild. <laughs> you look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta loosen this button here. Ah, there we go. You look for sprinkles in hopes he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. You shut up! Don't say a word! You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed and boiled the potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be proud. It looks so good. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for a small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with, the, with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling a sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! 
scooping up a finger full. Van Van tastes the drip, dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Corgi Sanders. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. I would. I would. Can I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in a silky seawater sauce. Plated on a battle axe forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long! That ends now! It is I who will have the first fight! You will all have to look at me with envy! The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate! No doubt! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right! I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process! The results could be toxic! Too late, it's been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I, I don't feel so good. He's fucking dead and kill him! Everyone step back, don't take another bite! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pops' mouth. Pops, Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then, it's almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. The entire class is gathered to watch Pops' final moments. Shock is frozen the whole crowd. They're motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back into reality. It would appear that Pops' enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. We're in! What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my cooking skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking's obviously very important to him. In a way, you find that inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Corgi Sanders? There's something I need to tell you. Uh -huh. Hold it right there. Uh. There's something I need to tell you first. 
Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world that the world has ever seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our heart, that our souls may grant them, like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I... You! Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of history! Or the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You, you, you can't prove that. Hmm. Uh, I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh. <laughs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, me, me. I'm the hero. <laughs> The Spock Monster is here to fight a hero! Shit's getting wild! Uh, I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten, threaten me just as I was letting my guard down, or down my guard and connect him with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! Let's go! Korg Raid in the chat. Korg Raid in the chat. Raise those swords! What will you do? Chat, what are we doing? We gotta attack. We gotta attack! Raise those swords! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love! Cook with love does one damage! It just got real. That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. And you take one damage. No defense. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. Does one damage. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster's really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Attack! You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love and it does one damage. At this rate, the semester will probably be over before this fight is. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses Utilitensil! You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Attack! Again! Does one damage! Spork Monster's oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack! Rounded Edge! Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Hot pot power pinch! Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. Spork monster is defeated. You, you saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Or get Marcy, finish him, or spare the wretched beast. Chatty's beaten. He's beaten. 
We need to spare him. He's already beaten. Kratos, Kratos taught us this. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! And do not dare come back or for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be, at first, to be a cookbook, but upon closer look and inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel the covers being pulled over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really uses... And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank. L like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was the only con and also the convert ugh, and was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if, you know, you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now. We definitely connected yesterday. How's it going, Tommy? <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Wow, okay. That sounds kind of conceited. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great! Remember that, chat. You are great. 
you have an idea about how to prove that you're you have an idea of how to prove your love is real well if he's not into me why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients oh no don't do it however you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient too which you discovered on your own your bestie's eyes light up secret ingredient yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. It's, is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me at the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. Red flags! Red flags! The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. Did she smuggle drugs? I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pal. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know what I we're we're brushing past this, okay? We're completely brushing past this. Miriam sm smuggled drugs. And it, we're done. It's over. That's it. The timeline, it's done. We're moving on. Like, keep, you gotta keep up. <clears throat> so I doubt I'd be much use to anybody. Oh, please, 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 please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel's secret or share it with your bestie? We're making up a fake ingredient. How's it going, four block? Hi, Slush. Fake ingredient. Quickly think of fake ingredient name. I don't know. What about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. It sounds like some kind of witch's potion. But what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and, and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she's definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Uh, naturally. Naturally. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. Chat, we're running. We are running full speed. Run to him! You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and the colonel are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, colonel, my colonel! However, your sudden movement surprised the horse, and it rears up, kicking you in the face! Ugh! The force of the blow completely knocked you out cold. Literally dead. 
Like actually dead. In the darkness, you see a vision. Oh, Corgi Sanders. I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. Oh, jeez! You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his naturally seasoned musk? The fuck? <laughs> Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes or lean in for a kiss. We can't come on strong, chat. We can't fuck this up. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, Summoning a demon bad? You try to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature or act like you're not interested, but really try and get a closer look. I'm going with two. There are a chain of events that must be set in motion. You sit near your rivals, leave your back turned to them. You hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try to cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Ugh. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ain't you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. I... Oh, I said it right. And I know I said it right because the, the, the captions caught it. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Evil! You finally get a closer look at what they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after the encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book beneath his back, behind his back. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned up against the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Plank must be running late. He's in such a hurry, he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts! 
Hey, you watch the way, watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Zwap. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. That face, though. <laughs> Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. <laughs> he comes in just to say, fuck you, I don't care. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. Don't say a thing. Not a thing! See ya, Crimson. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it! Riggle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Riggles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy. Down. Off top it. <laughs> the real Cadam cheered 100 bits. Why so short? I'm not short, Cadam! That command shouted by Colonel Sanders snaps Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. I like how he, break, he breaks out the fucking, like, German. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Short game CD, speak for yourself! Hello. And welcome on in. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. Can we get some chickens in the chat? Chickens in the chat! You want to pay attention to lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. Good to see you, CD. Welcome on in. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Corgi Sanders, naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you sample? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? Chat, we gotta, we gotta take the dog biscuit. We gotta take it. We gotta take the dog biscuit. I gotta know what it tastes like. I gotta know what it tastes like. Because of the shape it's baked in, you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by Sprinkles. An example of his own culinary talents, perhaps? You reach out for it when... Sprinkles jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron! What the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> it 
It's not my birth. It's the stream's birthday. Oh my God! They're the color. There, there, there's pink and yellow, and there's, and there's blue. Yay! Can we get some cord parties in the chat? Cord parties in the chat. That's super sweet. Thank you. Got like a graham crack crust around. So like graham cracker crumbs on the base. So I will have a step. Okay. No, I have, have, have to. That was so sweet. Thank you. Happy 10 years! And here's the 10 more. Here's the 10 more. That was super sweet. Hi, Jason. The real Catam cheered 50 bits. I know what you wished for. You just grew an inch, didn't you? No! It doesn't shut matter. Up. You're still short. <laughs> Excuse me. Wiggles <clears throat> jumps up and bites onto your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? I'm sorry. Your apron is left in tatters. The entire class looks on in horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. I never even got to taste it. You fade into darkness, but something is there. The Spork Monster? Borko? What are you doing here? It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself. You won't have to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend, wherever you are. Oh my god. Canadian underscore dragon cheered CD! 500 bits happy 10 year bean friend. Derb CD, rabbit. thank you for the 500 bits. Yo. Thank you so much. That's super sweet. Dad, can we get some loves? And mods, can we get a shout out for Canadian dragon? I got to meet CD at MFF. They're super heckin' sweet. Thank you so much, CD. I hope you're doing well today. All right, I guess we're doing a glass of water. You grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp, just like the purest snow melted by a mountain spring. Hey, that was mine! It was from my favorite toilet. You owe me six dollars. Ew. It's poo water! And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch! Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared by a timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the chart. Does she have a, a fucking knife? Do you see the knife? She's got a meat cleaver. Demand that they stop wasting everyone's time or step up and challenge them. Tell them you're on. Yeah, we're going. She brought a knife to a gunfight. Bit of a lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not 
not the fool. You're the fool, fool. <laughs> Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Corgi Sanders. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Ah! That just then huge red light or a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. Rhoda! They are empty tea strike at tier one! T, welcome back. That's what I'm talking about. Arr! Can we get some awoos in the chat? You know, it's funny because this, this aru is like actually corgi like speak. My dogs do this and it's adorable. I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts you to victory. Oh, that, that's a good idea, Frostbite. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure. So now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. Jammer time? You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? 100 Celsius. That's right. But how would you have even gotten into this school without knowing that? Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. Deal. I'm in. You're going to need to season this chicken before you can cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? 11. That's right! You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Gratitude! That's right! You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness energy. So where does it come from? Small town where big dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Arroo! You try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on the cooking. What's the sound of success? Silence. That's right, when they taste your cooking, they'll be so taken with it that they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Corgi Sanders. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonfuls of gravy would it take to fill a traditional Victorian tub? Shit! What were you thinking? Get your mind back in the competition! Grrr. You are sta stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. Uh, sorry, I forgot the question. Uh, ah! What does it have to do with crafting particular fried chicken and delicate base baked biscuits? Woof woof! You're really struggling to keep up. 
At the next station over, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the hand stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ah! Oh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance used in kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Word. You might not have any hands, but Corgi Sanders does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue the dough before it's overmixed. Corgi Sanders, no! Ah! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. Damn. Can't be, I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, too bad. And here I am with the completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. Hi, Twig. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Corgi Sanders' injury. You see, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Corgi Sanders to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer, these cr this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelée. Too fancy. Too fancy. Gordon would hate it. Gordon would hate it. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger in the hot chocolate sauce. Hmm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you? As he places a sauce-covered finger to his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage you feel, or put yourself between Colonel and Ashley. Chat. You have to remind me, Tommy. I'll have to wish a happy birthday on Friday when we're live. I'm storming out! Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and burn to ash, or turn to ash. They fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. 
Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and the small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can, can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I was, I've was i never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. <laughs> well, then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school. Incredibly handsome, successful, <laughs> motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was, <laughs> I was born that way. But I've walked other paths, arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but failed as an uh, obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. And I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rifle. <laughs> there it is! He survived. For a while, anyhow. I didn't know. Uh, this is okay, I guess. People see my delicate ribbon tie and, you know, well-kept beard. And assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. Can we get some Korg hugs in the chat? Chat, hug Colonel Sanders. Let him know it was okay that he shot his rival. <laughs> Let him know that it's okay. I mean, look at him. He's hot. It's fine. It's fine. He's attractive. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No matter, no amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure, it's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster! Borko! It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back. And after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster. Monster problems. Am I right? Aw, uh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there's no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark at night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. <laughs> Until one day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. He was a furry cat. Literally Mr. Peanut Butter. A magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way, I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. Uh, no, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there's some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Corgi Sanders, together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Hi, Lucy. 
Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. We're in! Chat, we're in. Chat, we're in. We're in! Pogs in the chat. A personal invite. You can't imagine what the Colonel what Colonel Sanders home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Colonel Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a bit of a side dish I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up and he starts to wa wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Perhaps both? Now you've got him right where you want him. You should reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you. Chat, yeah, we gotta reveal it. We gotta share! How's it going, Mega? We gotta share! You decide that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to this last bite? I'd like to have it around so I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. Yeah, you might want to eat that within like 12 hours or so though. It's going to turn to mush. It's going to be disgusting. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be a perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. There's a chicken! You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real! Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Nice. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and the mountain range beyond. Just then, a ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window a crack and the ghost is swept out with a breeze. Fuck that guy. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize the hair therein isn't just silvery in color. It's actually made of spun silver. Per Colonel's hair is literal silver? What? A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly starched collar piece of wood floating in a lake summer of 69 no it's one of the secret ingredients it's
KFC actually makes a candle, or they made a scented candle. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheersing them. Is that the guy he shot? You look closely and see there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man. Visiting the pyramids in Egypt? Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that must be the Colonel, Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded, am I right? <laughs> Am I right? You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on the nearby pestle. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. Here lies Squidward's hopes and dreams. This must be where he keeps his secret recipe. There's a there's a safe behind my camera. You can't see it. You think for a moment, what number is important to the colonel? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you set the dial to 111111, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. Hmm. You gotta try it. You open the door and to Colonel Sanders' closet to find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. <sighs> Not creepy at all. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off! Decide that now is your moment to take a, make a big move. Tell him you're cold, or fess up and tell the truth. We fess up, chat. He's not mad about it. He's not mad about it. We fess up. You confess. I... I think I've developed feelings for you, and I went snooping and sniffing your clothes. You stopped me before I got to the laundry hamper. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. <laughs> Chad, we're in! Oh, yeah, I opened your safe. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run to the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Corgi Sanders? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence!
Oh. No. Oh. Ugh. We spent the night! Yo. 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 Why didn't I see nothing? You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you learned about. In some jurisdictions, isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. I don't know what planet is considering this breakfast, but wherever it is, I want to be on it! You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. How could he be the world, or how could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? We're gonna flatter, flatter him. We're not gonna peg, I mean, we're not gonna knock him down a peg, okay? We're going to flatter him. You know, I think we might be a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Are we talking about you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you find is to run out the door and get home. No. <laughs> There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I, because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just, but now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but. You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first thing, first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> and now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her story. Or you don't give Miriam time to tell her story, however. Bottling up the details of your own nights, or of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from the whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go, go your separate ways. Thank you, Mega. 
When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite, quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. What's well, a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you two pick on someone your own size? I'm not short, Mark. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Corgi Sanders, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. That's not... Now you're twisting my words. I won't have it. <laughs> you clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident uh, makes you wince in pain. Hina, the horse is here. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as things appear to be boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Corgi Sanders, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday, I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Uh, technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Hmm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about your food, or about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Uh, excuse me, Corgi Sanders. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk to class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Corgi Sanders. Annoyed by the Colonel's inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is. You walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. No! Whoa, what? That's that book? Or, oh, whoa, that's that book? It looks like bad news. Something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of a surefire way to find out. You open a page to cover or to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it'll erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it could probably help me focus better. No! No! That is not an okay reaction. No! That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. We're not fucking doing it. There's no way. How's it going, Sasquatch? You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. 
a dog moment. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him a snack. Our dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Let's give him a snack. He's hungry. You reach into your backpack and grab some homework from last semester that you forgot to turn in. Sprinkles immediately goes for it and gobbles the sheet of paper like it's a piece of fresh chicken rawhide. Ahem! I apologize for that outburst. I know it seems cliche, but not much of this world, mu not much in this world satisfies like ungraded work. My, my, Corgi Sanders, you, were you studying something with cinnamon? I have been sitting in, a, in on a lecture series around the art of cake baking. How insightful. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Corgi Sanders, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's voice drama, love drama, spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Planks seem to be arguing, but you haven't learned to speak Planks' language of mechanical noises. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friend, Jeff and Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep, whirp. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Beep. Blake begins to shudder. Steam pours out the gaps in his panels and suddenly a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that clank. Clank burps out a completely deep fried sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels and not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. Damn. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looked okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be left alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like he didn't see, it, the see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't distra get distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. Yeah. I'm still working on the title, but you get the idea. Time, test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about an upcoming challenge, there's a very beautiful soul nearby that needs a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in front in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. Just the silly boy. Silly boy kissers, in fact. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining wind rushing through her short bangs. But she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Cor Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, maybe. Sort of. But... I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person. Who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow? Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make something, uh, uh, make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. 
While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your final. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat uh, beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through the quick a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Corgi Sanders' famous chicken pot pie. How's it going, Javi? After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do... Your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders! Corgi Sanders, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm a big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Mm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You usually hap ha us you'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry. But the last time you let Colonel Sanders get into your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets hard to stick to when... The oven timer goes off behind you! Ignore it like there was no sound at all or fess up. We gotta fess up, chat. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. Cryptic Glacier Cryptic! resubbed for 16 months Yo! and says, 10 years pog, keep up the awesome content. Cryptic, thank you so much for the 16 month resub. Welcome back. Can we get some loves in the chat? Thank you so much, and thank you for the uh, the 10 year wishes. Here's the 10 more. I know, my, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. Give me one second here, chat. I gotta shoot a DM. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. Do it, chat! The moment of truth. Oh! Dude, it looks so good. It looks so good. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown's about to begin! Friggles lays down the ground rules.
There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything that you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. Can we get some jammers in the chat? Oh my god, thank you. Oh my god! Jaloon made food too. Oh my god. Ah, it looks so good! What is it? Barbecue chicken? Huh? Oh, it's salmon! Teriyaki salmon? I don't, I don't think you were. Teriyaki salmon! Oh my god. Thanks, B. This is actually almost done, so that's good. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes for their usually usual over-the-top style. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big on going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, rice reserve, fried chicken. The intensity of the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Yes, it is, Hazel. Everyone's calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, it's getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken and it levitates through the air. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into tiny itty into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend battle blaster! Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. <laughs> Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? <gasps> it's the singularity that was foretold. <gasps> we mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Dan then quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's most certainly evil magic? Do it the hard way, chat. Do it the hard way! Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way! Colonel Sanders sees you've chosen to win on your own terms and gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Corgi Sanders. Miriam notices too. Aww. And I've always believed in you, Corgi Sanders, since we were little kids because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice Miriam's at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied about the ingredient it was made up. And in the world, in where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying across the room. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bumbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? What happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices you got the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. 
I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles into a pot of salted water? I'd love to! I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know what? I was just a little spork pup back in the old country. You feel Spork Monster winding up to tell a very long tale. But you don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should just watch from the stands. It's really... I really need to focus on the competition. I understand it's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during Scare Tactics class, and when I woke up... You toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hit. Chat, everybody stare at Steve. Everybody stare right at him. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered a huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. Summon extra power from deep within yourself! I can do this! I have what it takes! I came here to win! Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Corey Sanders, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know what, you know that with this power you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Corey Sanders, you may have suffered some setbacks, but not all is lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides you've earned his support. I've been watching you today and I must say I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right behind you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time's almost up. You're going to need, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been, really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, Clay. From off screen, you hear a pure, innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Ha <laughs> ha It's flying! Sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It's not a salad! It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't even cook anything. I can't feel my legs. Can I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say, it's not the worst prank UCSAL in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, we must have gotten unplugged. I guess we'll have to figure out la figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. 
Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. Oh, it looks so good, but it's like super tiny. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narutamaki? I spy floating atop this itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef's my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea I made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electronic toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed, she gives a huge hug. Thank you, Corgi Sanders, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uh -huh. uni over smooth egg custard and an axe cue and urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with the spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Why, yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the sprinkle or all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof! Please be gentle with my cuisine. Urgh. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't take it. I keep poking my tongue. Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. <gasps> Disqualified for glamour. Don't discount the This is the last you this isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. Mega resub for seven months. Mega! Yo! Thank you so much for the seven month resub. Welcome back. Yeah, can we get some loves for the resub? Hello, good morning. And mods, can we get a shout out for Mega? Twitch ambassador, good friend and co-host of our panel at MFF. I'm still waiting on that email. I'm still waiting on that email to get that fucking footage. Whatever that's going to be. Can't go follow Mega. Yeah, we're having a good time. Welcome on in. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask you to please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something, Corgi Sanders? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. 
Good to see you, my guy. Hope you have a great day. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everybody. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. <laughs> ah! The macaroni with the chicken strips? Ah! <laughs> Bro, it looks so good. It looks so good, though. Uh-oh. I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Tap, tap, tap! Tap, tap in the chat! Get the drum rolls, chat. Chat, we're doing a plush giveaway right after this. Plush giveaway. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing? It completely blow me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win! Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item so impressive, even Van Van and Ashley are drawn back by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on! How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is, com is complete and everybody has graduated... The students return for one last assignment to get their groove on! Dances in the chat! Let's go! It's party time! The cafeteria has become completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive, high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> DJ Dog in the house! Ow, ow, ow! It never gets old. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turn to bliss? Who says you can't teach a dog new tricks? Van Van and Ash... What are these outfits? What are these outfits, bro? Bro! <laughs> Van Van! Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. Uh, I was actually never a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone's together, it's a spork monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here out, I prefer everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he has to say, but everyone's too wrapped up talking to spork. Sorry. Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. And you know she's going to do great. Hi, Disky. Thank you. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. 
walk in the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to com complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by a sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can ta reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank. And I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew it the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I, I, I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I just began to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out how you, who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she managed to surpass you in that regard. He's an alien! Alien pleasing! I understand, kind of, humans are weird. A portal opens up and Plank disappears through it. He literally just did the adios meme. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he's come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. It's time, it's a full meal! Ah! Look at it! I didn't get to be the most famous, or I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> no, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Corgi Sanders? I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy carried out by two cunning chefs, or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this do -si do Dude, we need we need a fucking we need a goddamn Colonel Riz emote. Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of his fingers. His hand, the hand of a master chef so dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender yet refined, so milky smooth. Fingers like finely battered drumsticks, turned in flour, soaked in buttermilk, and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight they reach for you. And though our feet may tire of dancing, I believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on, this on the dance floor, but in the kitchen as my co-chef and partner in both business and in life? Let's go! You gasp, could it be? Is he really saying me and you together? Ever since I met you, my dream has changed. It's not enough to simply open the great world's greatest chain of fried chicken restaurants. No, even then my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what, so what do you say, partner? I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders! The for real end? Thank you for the 10 gifted subs! 
And the 10th anniversary wishes. Thank you. Wow, that was a life-changing three days. Overwhelmed by everything that just happened between you and Colonel Sanders. You step outside to get some air. The quad is dark and quiet. Too quiet. Can we get some loves for the gifteds? Phoenix, thank you so much. And thank you, Morrow. You start to smell something. Salty? Potatoey? Gravy? Just then, Spork Monster appears. Hi, Corgi Sanders. You had some pretty sweet dance moves back there. Why, thank you. You weren't too shabby yourself. That moonwalk you did was pretty cool. Oh, you notice? I'm so embarrassed. Anyway, I had to ask you. You see, life as a potato-like creature is difficult. I have no place to call home other than people's nightmares. Oh, I had no idea. I was wondering if I might be able to go home with you permanently. I'll run out and get the paper in the morning and everything. What do you say? Adopt him. He's adorable. Or no, a dorm room is no place. We can adopt him? We've never seen this before! This is a secret ending! We adopt him. My hero, I will forever be in your debt. The end, seriously though, it really is this time. <laughs> we did it! Pogs in the chat! Let's go! Hyperclaps in the chat, we did it! Another year down! Another year down, that is four years.